Uh, good morning, children. My name is Teacher Toto, and welcome to our service today. So we're going to have a lot of things, some dancing, some sing-alongs with Teacher Kabugi, some Bible lessons on the Holy Spirit, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourself. Are you ready for some crafts and for everything else? But before we do all these things, let's just pray. God, we thank you, and we pray that you may continue to guide us for this day in the, in the service, in everything that we do. Uh, you are the best. Help us to understand what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, hello, Kisima champions. It's me again, teacher Benjamin. And I know you remember last week's lesson about the Holy Spirit and the attributes of God and the Trinity of God. And we shall be continuing the same lesson, but now today we're going to be focusing on God, the Holy Spirit. You see, God created us in his image and his likeness. The way he is three in one is the same way we are three in one. I remember giving you an example of a smoothie. A smoothie with grapes, a pineapple, or even watermelon, but it's one juice. That's the same way. We were created one, but three in us. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And the same way, God is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the person, is a person. He was left by Jesus Christ to help us to continue living for God and doing the right thing. Because God was there in the beginning, then he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us. And when Jesus Christ died, he saved us and he went to heaven. He left us the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Can you ask yourself that question? Can you ask your brother or your sibling that question? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person. We cannot see him. We cannot touch him. But we can feel him. And we feel him in many ways. He talks to us. Let, give me, let, let, me, let me give you an example. Let's say you're in class and you don't have a pencil and you see your neighbor's pencil and um, you think to yourself, should I take this pencil? Then one voice tells you, yes, you can take that pencil. You need it. But another voice tells you, no, don't take that pencil. That pencil is not yours. So the person that gives you the correct advice is the Holy Spirit. And the person who gives you the wrong advice is the devil. The Holy Spirit was left to us to give us advice. He was left to us so that he can help us do the right things. You see, when your mom tells you to do something, he sends you or your pap sends you. The Holy Spirit enables you not to feel angry and say, and mm, don't want to go. He tells you, go, obey your parents. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to do the right thing, to make the right decisions so that we can please him. And you see, children, the Holy Spirit can get angry when we don't do the right thing because he is God. God wants us to do the right thing so that we can reach heaven. And when we do the right thing, God is pleased. And when we do the wrong thing, God is unpleased because he wonders. I have given you the Holy Spirit. Why are you not listening to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is eternal. He lives forever. He does not die. We can see that in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. It says, how much more then with the blood of Christ, who through eternal spirit, the Holy Spirit, offered himself unblemished to God to cleanse ourselves, uh, to cleanse uh, our cons conscience, yes, conscience, from the acts that lead to death, so that we may serve him, the living God. So the Holy Spirit helps us to avoid death, and death is brought about by sin. So children, the Holy Spirit 
you should listen to the Holy Spirit because he is God. And God is for us and he's not against us. He wants us to live and not die. So children, ponder on the Holy Spirit. Make sure you listen to the person who gives you the correct advice. And that is the Holy Spirit. See you next time, children. Bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Holy Spirit fills me up, fills me up until I overflow from a thimble to a cup, from a river to a deep blue sea. Holy Spirit lives in me. Come on, sing along with me. Holy Spirit fills me up, fills me up until I overflow. From a thimble to a cup From a river to a deep blue sea Holy Spirit lives in me He lives in me Oh, can't you see Jesus is love Sent from above he lives in you. Oh, can't you see? Jesus is love sent from above. Holy Spirit fills me up. Fills me up until I overflow from a thimble to a cup. From a river to a deep blue sea. Holy Spirit lives in me. Holy Spirit lives in me. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet If you're happy and you know it, nod your head If you're happy and you know it, nod your head if you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, nod your head If you're happy and you know it, nod your head One more time If you're happy and you know it, nod your head If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, nod your head If you're happy and you know it, say amen If you're happy and you know it, say amen if you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, say amen One more time If you're happy and you know it, not say amen If you're happy and you know it, say amen If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it If you're happy and you know it, say amen Thank you very much, Kisima Champions See you next time Good morning. I'm back again with lesson two. Last week, we spoke about God, the Holy Spirit. And we looked at He is a person. We can't see Him with our eyes. We can't touch Him. But we can feel Him. We can hear Him speaking to us. And we said He helps us with our, when we are sad. He helps us with things that are difficult. We can grieve Him, meaning that we can make Him sad. He has a mind. And this mind touches the mind of God and touches our mind and helps us understand what the will of God is. We also said last week that he prays for us. The Holy Spirit prays for us. Children, if you have something difficult, don't be depressed about it. Tell God, the Holy Spirit, to pray for you. He prays for you. Now, this morning, I want to 
look at lesson two, God the Holy Spirit. Now we're looking at his deity. He's, he's, he is God. Okay. Last week we said he is God, but he has attributes of a human being. But today we're talking about him as God. Now look at Genesis. Books of the Bible. Do you know the books of the Bible? Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. Now Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we see God creating people. And he was saying, let us create man. Let us create man in our image and likeness. Now he wasn't alone. So there seems to be there are more than one or two people there. And so we know there was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he is God because he was part of creation. In fact, in the beginning we see God spoke and there was. So the Holy Spirit created these all other things. So he is God creator. He is part of creation. In Matthew 28, we see Jesus saying, go and teach other people about the good news of Jesus Christ. When they believe that good news, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God, the Holy Spirit, is part of the Trinity. The Trinity has three personalities there. It has God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized in the, in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, what happened? I know you know the story because you've been coming to Kisima Champions. Yes, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, came down from heaven. And he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he came like in a form of a bird. He, he came in a form of a bird. And there was a voice from heaven and said, this is my son. You know, so the Holy Spirit was sent down was sent down by God to come and confirm that Jesus was the Son of God. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, we read again that Jesus had told his disciples not to leave Jerusalem, not to go. Why, 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 why did he tell them not to go? You remember last week I said Jesus had promised to send a helper. Now, this helper was the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, he came in a form of fire, tongues of fire. You know, and these people started speaking in different languages. Now, if you are in that group of disciples and you hear somebody speaking Chinese, another speaking Japanese, another speaking whatever language, people are like, why? What are these people talking about? The Holy Spirit came to these people, the disciples, and he spoke and they were able to speak in tongues of fire. That is the, only the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when they, they received the power, the, when they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to go out and tell everybody the good news of Jesus Christ. They were able to preach in the markets. They were able to preach in the churches or in the temples, they called them that time. And people wondered, wow, who are these people? These people have not gone to school. They are not educated. Why do they speak with such courage and boldness? You know what, kids? They are filled with the Holy Spirit. So God, the Holy Spirit, when he fills you, when he comes upon you, You'll do extraordinary things, things that are powerful. Only God can help you do such things. Now, you might think, oh, I'm just a child. I can only go to school and help my mom. I am just a believer. I read my Bible and trust God. I want to encourage you children to pray that the Lord God, Holy Spirit will fill you so that you can do great things for God. Give me examples of things that you'd like to do for God. Just type in the comment section and tell us, what are some things you really want the Holy Spirit to help you do? Telling others about God's love. You know, God is love. Can you say that with me? God is love. Yes, First John chapter 4, verse 8. The Holy Spirit also helps us to love people. There are people who are difficult to love. They're just, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit can help you love them. You want to be able to pray for other children who are poor or they are sick and they need help and God the Holy Spirit can enable you to do that with courage. You want to help share stuff with you and so, sometimes you know children are very selfish. Mine, it's mine, it's mine. But God the Holy Spirit can help you to share things with other children that have nothing. Only God can help us to love people. And we cannot say we love God when we can't love other children. So one test to show that you love God is by loving other children. And God, the Holy Spirit, can help you, 
can help me love other children. You know, God is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. He, he will not die. You know, he will live forever and ever and ever. Now, because you've been coming to Kisima Champions or you've been going to church, those who are watching us from other places, I want you to write like five attributes of God. Things that you know are about God. God is eternal. God is love. Add some three more to make it five. Add some three more so that we can have these attributes of God. God is love. I've already told you that. John chapter, first John chapter four, verse eight. God is eternal. He will live forever. You know, give me some three more as part of your homework. As part of your three home, or of your homework, add three more to show me that you know the attributes of God. So remember, God, the Holy Spirit, He was in creation. He is, he lives in us. You've been, he, 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 we, we'll learn that later. And he also, he is the one who helps us to love other people. And so pray this week that God, the Holy Spirit, will fill you to have his power to do things that only God can do. Ask him to help you do that. And when you don't understand things in the Bible, tell him, Holy Spirit, teach me. Because Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week. May God the Holy Spirit protect you. May the God the Holy Spirit lead you. May he help you with all things that you're doing. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hello, Kisima champions, and praise God. Teacher Regina here, and today we are going to do a craft. So prepare yourself. What is the craft about? My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We are going to first of all read our memory verse from 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What does it say? It says, Or do you, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. That is our memory verse. So stay tuned, children. So this is what we are going to prepare. We are going to have a paper plate, and we are going to have white manila papers, and we are going to have ice cream sticks. This is what we are going to do. Paper plate, good. Then we are going to have um, white manila papers. Then you need to cut the shape of love. Then you are going to take your paper punch, punch it that way. Punch it that way. Good. Then inside this paper, you are going to write, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then we are going to take our, our ice cream sticks. Then we are going to make a cross. Then using your paper punch again, you can punch it this way to make a cross. Always be careful whenever you're using a paper punch. Tell your parent to help you so that you don't hurt yourself. So you are going to put it here. Be careful when you are doing this. You can put it here on this other side again. Wonderful. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, what are you supposed to do? Aha, uh -huh. you are supposed to, number one, read the Bible. You are going to have some manila papers. Number one, you are going to read the Bible. Read the Bible. Number two, you're going to pray. Do you pray? You need to pray every day. Number three, you're going to obey. 
You can write as many as possible, just like the one I wrote in the beginning. So this, what you're going to do, you're going to punch them on this side, like this. Be careful, then punch it like this. You're going to obey your parent. When your body is the temple of Jesus Christ, then you're going to read the Bible. You're going to read your Bible, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. And that is our craft. Meet you next time. Bye-bye. Why, why, why? Our service has come to an end. Children. Time for you to go and have some family time. You eat and dance and sing and tell a lot of stories. What was your best part in our lesson today, in our service today? You can share with us on the comment section below. And please, as we end our service, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube at the Kisima Champions for many other things about children and the, our singing, our Bible verses, our lessons, and all of those on those places that we've mentioned. So now, it's a good bye. Bye-bye.